Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a look at intermittent pads, and I've actually got one here. As you see, it's a very thin item in that condition, but uh, fairly uh, rectangular shaped otherwise. And the point of these is that they're say, very thin in their default condition, but when a fire occurs and these are exposed to high temperatures, these expand and puff up and then basically block the hole or whatever you've put them into. Now this particular one is designed for trunking, and it's a situation where you might say cut a 3 by 3 inch hole through a wall, put some steel or possibly uh, plastic trunking through there with cables in, but of course uh, if a fire occurs in one of these rooms you don't want it to be spreading through that hole into the next room, you want it to be contained in the individual place it started, and the point of that is then it will expand inside the trunking, block up the hole for a certain amount of time, and therefore limit the spread of fire. And you can also get similar things like this for all kinds of other places as well, so you can put them in behind things like light switches and socket boxes and whatever else. And really it's anywhere where you've got uh, one room that's a fire compartment, and you don't want that fire to then be spreading into other rooms, or at least not spreading there for a certain amount of time, say an hour or two hours, or however long it's uh, decided to be. Because, to say, if you're just going to uh, go to a building and start cutting massive holes through the walls for cables, pipes, or pretty much anything else, all those holes are going to be routes for fire to spread, so a fire in one room could be contained if it was all sealed. And of course, if it wasn't and there were massive holes everywhere, that fire could spread throughout the whole building very rapidly, causing the whole building to be destroyed. So uh, we've got this one here. We're going to see what happens to this when it is heated up with a flame. So uh, let's have a, just a closer look at this, and then we'll go outside and uh, see what happens when it's set on fire. So here's the one we've got, and uh, so this one is made by this uh, Envirograph company. This is not a sponsor video, just happens to be the one we have here. Other manufacturers are available. And it says here this is actually designed for trunking. This says one to four hours protection apparently, so let's take it out of there. And you see it's got these uh, peel strips on the back here, which are just self-adhesive, so you could uh, just peel that away. And then you would just stick this say into the bottom or the top or whatever of the trunking there and so normally it's just a very thin flat item and say so when this is exposed to a fire it should expand and then block the hole and prevent the fire from going through and the material these are made from is also fire resistant so that uh, it will expand and then the fire can't actually burn through it for a certain amount of time. Uh, this one says one to four hours protection and says there for PVC steel trunking passing through block brick or concrete so uh, that's what we have there. Of course it comes with this label you can uh, put on the outside to inform people that it's inside because of course trunking is a sealed compartment and therefore once this is inside you're not going to be able to see it unless you start taking it apart. And again that's just a peel and stick label there so fairly straightforward. Now we don't actually have any trunking here and if we did it wouldn't be desperately useful because of course uh, it would be a sealed box and we wouldn't be able to see what's happening inside so instead of that we're going to just take this now we're going to stick it inside this steel box here, and it does actually fit fairly well down inside there. And then we shall heat this up with a flame and see uh, what sort of expanding effect we actually get. So you can imagine that would be the trunking, let's just say with no actual uh, lid on in this case. And you can actually get these to fit in the back of socket boxes, so that's about the right height, but uh, it would obviously fit uh, completely in there for that. And say pretty much anywhere where you're cutting a hole through a wall or some other partition and you don't want the fire to be going through there into the adjoining space. Now as usual it's windy outside but uh, we're going to uh, just heat this up so I've got a gas flame here and I'm just going to uh, apply the flame to one end here. Now see the plastic coating has pretty much melted away there to be expected and you see that inside it's basically a foil material and then the uh, expanding intermessive material is contained between them. So uh, as it heats up there you'll see now it's starting to expand there and it's coming out pretty rapidly. So it's a sort of black fibrous material inside and already it's uh, expanded to fill the height of this particular box which is 35 millimeters. You can see that's going well beyond. And also note that where the flame is directly on this it's glowing at sort of orangey red but the material itself isn't actually burning and uh, disintegrating. It's uh, simply dissipating the heat away and remaining intact. So we'll continue heating this anyway and see uh, how far this will expand. And uh, a few flames there, that's just from the uh, plastic that they're burning off from the coating.
Now we're getting right into it now and you see it's still expanding away there and say so because it's quite windy this stuff is now blowing around and disappearing but you can imagine if this was inside a say 3x3 three three trunking or something all of this material would expand it now and actually completely blocked the trunking there to prevent fire going through and uh, you see it's still even now expanding away there so there's a substantial amount of stuff in this I'll just heat the final end piece here again a bit of flame there where the basic plastic burns off and some of that's a uh, excess amount of gas from this uh, poor quality torch but uh, as before it continues to expand and it's totally filled the box and a considerable amount of this is actually now blown away in the wind and is now flapping all over the garden so I'll have to clean that up later And you see, as before, though we're heating that literally directly with the gas flame, the material itself isn't actually burning. It simply continues to expand and the heat is basically being dissipated away. The material itself isn't actually being damaged or destroyed. And as we heat there right into the middle of it, it continues to expand even further. Now it's completely filling the box and spilling out all over the place. So I think that's enough heating for that. And you see it's this uh, sort of black fibrous type material. A lot of air space between that and then say the fibre itself will uh, dissipate the heat so the fire can't actually get through it and therefore go into the next room or the partition adjacent. Now I'll just poke at this with this uh, implement here and you can see it's uh, totally filled the box there and if we zoom out a bit uh, you can see it's just spilled all over the floor on that piece of plywood there and that uh, terracotta pot there is actually a ceramic one it's not uh, plastic obviously for that would be rather foolish to heat that up. So uh, that's essentially what it's supposed to do. And despite it being a very thin item to start with, there is a huge amount of material that actually comes out of it when it's expanded. So of course that would easily fill up the entire trunking and stop the flames going through to the next room. And the material itself can be sort of kind of compressed down, but again a fire is not going to be doing that. So uh, there we have it. That seems a uh, fairly successful product and seems to work as intended, which of course is pretty much what you'd expect. So that's it for this video. Until next time, thanks for watching.